My name is Douglas Gilfoyle and this recording is a brief introduction to the International Law of the Sea course at uh, the University College London Faculty of Law's LLM program. This is not a comprehensive introduction to everything the course will cover, it's very much a high level overview. But what I want to do here is emphasise the way we'll be dealing with the law of the sea as a large complex system, but one where we will break it down into individual topics and regimes. So let's think about the law of the sea as a system for a moment. So I have this quite complex diagram here that I'll talk about in a number of ways. But you'll see that it has two poles, coastal state security and high seas governance. The idea here is that there are different values and processes going on when we look at the oceans. The oceans are enormously important. They are the highway for 90% of the world's trade by volume. They are an enormously important source of food for the world in terms of fisheries. We look to the oceans and we see issues of environmental law in terms of fisheries and conservation management in terms of pollution. We see issues impinging on trade. We also increasingly see issues impinging on security. Things like piracy off the coast of Somalia, the threat of maritime terrorism, and uh, in a strange way crossing over between those, illegal fishing as both an environmental issue and a criminal law issue. So we have this area, the maritime domain, the two-thirds of the Earth's surface that is covered by water, and we have very different interests at play. So at one end of the spectrum, we have the coastal state, which is going to be very interested in its security. It's going to want control over the vessels that come into its port. It's going to want to be able to enforce its maritime uh, laws off its coast in areas like drug smuggling, fisheries management, and resource exploitation, uh, and it's going to be interested in monitoring what vessels are off its coast. So it's going to be interested in claiming sovereignty and exclusive rights, particularly in areas such as fisheries and resources in the continental shelf. But at the other end of my diagram, we had a set of, as it were, community interests, the high seas regime, which is built around freedom of navigation, so all states have equal access to the oceans, and flag state control. Law on the high seas follows the flag. That is, vessels are subject to the law of the flag they fly. So you're relying on flag states to maintain order in this commons regime. But it's not totally unregulated and completely left to individual states. The high seas is an area bound by law, and we'll spend a lot of time looking at the UN Law of the Sea Convention, which runs to some 300 articles and covers everything from uh, law enforcement and piracy to fisheries management uh, to the exploitation of continental shelf resources to marine scientific research and so on. And uh, we'll also talk throughout the course at a number of points about the International Maritime Organization, which is the UN agency that takes the lead role in really harmonizing states' interests between uh, the individual and the collective in that sense of balancing this need for a commons regime, uh, for the oceans beyond national jurisdiction, but also the need to give coastal states a sufficient sense of control over the waters closest to them. So within that context, uh, we then look at a range of activities within um, what I'd refer to, uh, what's commonly referred to in American literature in particular, as the maritime domain. So all the things that the sea can be used for, uh, and these uses can be exclusive, uh, uses reserved exclusively to one particular coastal state or inclusive, part of the commons regime vested in all states. And so 
uh, there's an enormous complex of issues, and the course will actually go beyond the issues that I have listed in this brief overview, but will include things like marine and environment resource law, this first big bubble, where we'll be talking about the continental shelf, pollution, scientific research, and also uh, states' control of their exclusive economic zone and their ability to manage fisheries. And, you know, that leads us to the issue of illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing, uh, which can pose severe dangers uh, for uh, the environment and for fish stocks. And here we have a vessel suspected of IUU fishing uh, off the coasts of Antarctica in an internationally managed fisheries area. Uh, transnational organised crime is an area of increasing concern. Traditionally, drug trafficking still a real problem, but also uh, people smuggling. Um, people smuggling out of Africa into Europe being a constant source of concern for Mediterranean states at the moment. Uh, we can also increasingly think of piracy, uh, a very interesting issue in which I do a lot of research, where we have 30 different navies or naval vessels deployed in the Gulf of Aden conducting counter piracy control, uh, counter piracy patrols, sorry. And that links to ideas again perhaps about maritime terrorism and issues of how we maintain uh, port security and particularly how we counter the use of the seas as a highway for the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. So those are just some of the issues that we'll be dealing with in the Law of the Sea course. So as I say, we'll deal with issues separately, um, certainly fishing, the marine environment, law enforcement, piracy. We'll also do a number of classes on history and theory where we try and look at this big picture a bit. But we'll also try and present the course in some ways as an interrelated whole. Uh, it's a fascinating field and uh, you will have the benefit of being taught not exclusively by me, uh, but we'll also have input from other teachers as well who bring particular expertise, say in marine science, to the class. We generally get about 20 students every year. Uh, they typically find it very interesting. We do quite well in course evaluations. And this year assessment will be by one 4,000 word miniature research essay, a, a short essay on a select topic, uh, which will be worth 50% of the course, and then a shorter than usual two hour exam worth the other 50% of the course. And there'll be opportunities in class both to submit a piece of practice writing for the assessed essay, and we also normally conduct a mock exam where people sit down and write under real exam conditions uh, a practice paper, uh, usually from the previous year's exam, and that will be marked and people get feedback. So that's the basic structure of the course, and I look forward to seeing you in class. Thank you.